So thank you for the introduction, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Anu, and I'm very excited to, um, to present the results that we have on the security of two round multi-signatures. So let's start with multi-signatures. Multi-signatures are a, a cryptographic building block that allow a group of signers to collaboratively sign a common message. So let's say for concreteness, we have Alice, Bob, and Charlie here. They can all generate a key pair for a signature scheme as, as, as is usual, but now they can all agree to sign a common message by running a potentially interactive signing algorithm. The result of that is, is sigma is what we call the multi-signature, and now anybody can verify that um, both Alice, Bob, and Charlie wanted to sign that message M. And the goal here is that, um, that the sigma is much smaller than n signatures. Uh, ideally, it's even constant size. And uh, similarly, we want the verification to be very efficient. So uh, ideally, as, as efficient as verifying a single signature. And the security promise is that we can only see a valid signature if each of those signers indeed wanted to sign the message. One extra feature that we often like is called key aggregation. And if I want to know that Alice, Bob, and Charlie signed the message, what I can do is take their public keys and then first squeeze them together in what's called an aggregate public key. Now I verify the multi-signature against that aggregate public key, and if that's valid, then I'm convinced that the three signers approved the message. And multi-signatures have many applications. Uh, in short, any place where many people sign the same message, multi-signatures are typically a good idea. One example is in Bitcoin, where I might protect my Bitcoins with multiple keys and require each of the keys to sign off spending of my Bitcoins. Uh, this is something that can be done more efficiently with multi-signatures. And actually, the Bitcoin community is considering moving to a different signature scheme uh, for uh, where this is one of the reasons. Uh, a different use case was presented here uh, three years ago, um, and the target there is to distribute trust in, 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 uh, in authorities. For example, reducing the trust in certificate authorities by splitting them up in, in many small pieces, and then they all need to sign off uh, to, for example, generate a certificate. And this is another thing where multi-signatures can, can help. Uh, it's been proposed to generate randomness beacons uh, using multi-signatures, and a fourth interesting use case is in permissioned or uh, proof-of-stake blockchains. Uh, there typically you have some, some committee of users that needs to approve adding a block to the blockchain by signing that block off. And uh, that means they all need to sign the same block. So multi-signatures are useful there. Good, so multi-signatures have many use cases. Um, let's see how we can build them. Which schemes do we have? And as a start, I'm gonna talk you through the basic Schnorr signature scheme, and then we can look at uh, turning that into a multi-signature scheme. So in the Schnorr signature scheme, uh, a signer has a public key, which is G to the secret key. And to sign a message, it first takes some randomness, and then computes a value T, which is G to the randomness. Then it hashes that value T along with the message that it wants to sign, which we call C. And um, it computes the value S, which is this randomness it chose earlier, plus C times that secret key. And now that uh, the C and S together form the signature, and this we can very efficiently uh, uh, verify. And what's nice about this is that it's efficient and it's provably secure under the discrete log assumption. And what's particularly interesting about the signature scheme is that it's very structured. So for example, this S value, the, the secret key only appears in this value S, multiplied by some constant, and this structure is, is what is useful, which we'll see later. So many people have tried creating multi-signature schemes out of the Schnorr signature scheme. And first I'll talk you through the, the standard way of doing that, of how you attempt that, and then we're gonna see some problems. So let's say we just take three users again and they all generate their individual key pair. They compute this T value as before, and now they're going to interact and send each other the t-value, such that they can all compute the product of the t-values, compute the c-value as before, and all compute a part of the s-value, which they send around. And because of that structure, we can sum that up. 
And now we have a signature, which is small, and we can verify against the product of their public keys. So we can multiply the keys together, we can see that as their aggregate public key, and what we've constructed here with some interaction exactly has the shape of a standard Schnorr signature. So this looks, this looks promising, but unfortunately there are some issues here. The first issue is called the rogue key attack. This allows an adversary to choose a specific key to attack a user. So if we have a, an honest user on the left with public key one, now the adversary can choose his public key by taking G to the sum value divided by this honest user's public key. And because we take the aggregate public key as the product of those individual public keys, the adversary effectively cancels out the public key of the honest user. That means that it can just compute signatures by itself, even in the name of that honest user, which goes against our security properties. But this attack is not new. This, this has been known for a very long time, and we have many ways of dealing with this. Uh, one way is having different C values per signer. A different way is uh, requiring users to prove that they know their own secret key. Uh, or a more recent uh, approach is doing a bit more complicated key aggregation, where we don't just multiply, but we raise each key to a different exponent. So this problem we, we know how to address. There is, unfortunately, a second, more subtle issue. And this mainly shows up when you're trying to prove the security of the scheme. When you try to prove the security, you need to simulate signing queries. And in the standard Schnorr security proof, you can do this by what's called programming the random oracle. So you, um, you use the fact that you assume an idealized hash function. Unfortunately, in, in the multi-signature case, this doesn't work because the adversary can control the product of the T values. So this seems like a technicality, but this prevents you from proving security in the way that you expect you could. And many people have tried to address this second issue in, in varying ways. So um, Bellara and Naven, for example, instead of using a two-round scheme, they add an additional communication round to their protocol uh, exactly to avoid the second issue. Uh, Bagazandi et al. Um, used a more complicated way to compute that T value with what's called a homomorphic equi equivocable commitment, uh, and then try to prove security with only two communication rounds. Uh, Ma et al. used double-sized secret keys and then tried to use the witness indistinguishability of that to prove security in two rounds. Um, COSI is the multi-signature scheme that was presented here three years ago. Um, they essentially used the plain Schnorr multi-signature scheme, uh, but they didn't run into this problem because they didn't try to prove it secure. Um, and recently, MUSIG is a scheme that was designed for use in Bitcoin. Uh, they try to avoid this issue by using a stronger cryptographic assumption. Now, surprisingly, what we found is that all these two round schemes are, in fact, insecure. Um, so we can show concrete attacks on all of those schemes because they all share the common issue of not fully addressing this second issue that I described. Uh, we introduced a sl slight modification of the Bagazandi et al. scheme uh, that, that does address this issue. Um, so that we can, with a small fix, we can repair that scheme. And other schemes that came out after this work go back to focusing on three round schemes, and we still have secure schemes from BLS, uh, based on BLS signatures. Good, so let's look at these attacks and, and the problems with those two round schemes. And to do that, we're going to look at Wagner's algorithm. This is a way of solving the so-called k-sum problem. In the k-sum problem, you have k lists of random integers modulo q. And the challenge is find one element in each of those k lists such that the, they sum up to zero modulo q. And you can imagine that if q is large, let's say a 256-bit number, this is a very hard problem, right? Because it seems unlikely that some random numbers add up to zero. However, Wagner's algorithm does a surprisingly good job at this problem and solves it in sub-exponential time. This is what we're going to use to, to do our attacks. So if we think back at the Schnorr signature scheme, we saw that the secret key only appeared in this value s, uh, which was some randomness plus c times the secret key, where c was some hash. So you can imagine that if we have a set of signatures where uh, these C values have special structure, 
in particular where the C values add up to the hash of a different message, then we can just take the signatures that we have, somehow add them up to come up with a new signature on that different message without knowing the secret key. And so this is exactly the, the attack that we're going to do. However, finding such signatures is, is, is difficult. But what we find is that we can translate this to the k-sum problem. So we can make k lists of different hashes and then run Wagner's algorithm to find uh, nice hashes in those lists such that we get this special structure that we need. And then we can combine signatures that we have into a new signature uh, on a forged message. Um, and so this, this intuition works on those four schemes. So the Bagazan Lidl schemes, uh, the Maadal schemes, Cozy, and the first version of music. Uh, basically in exactly the same way. And while it's not exactly polynomial, because Wagner's algorithm is sub-exponential, it's actually very practical. So um, we find that uh, for, for standard group sizes that we use today, if we make only 15 signing queries, we can forge a signature in two to, the 64, uh, two to the 62 steps. And if we make 127 signing queries, um, we only need two to the 45 steps of computation. So this is, this is very concretely practical. We can, we can break, we can forge signatures for all those schemes. You might wonder if we can, um, if we can resolve the situation by taking larger, uh, larger groups, because it's not exactly a polynomial attack. Uh, but that actually also seems very unlikely. And that is because uh, what we prove is that uh, you cannot prove the security of these schemes under the one more discrete log problem if that assumption is actually hard. Uh, there are some, some technical restrictions to this, to this uh, statement. But what it really means is that it's very unlikely that these schemes can be proven secure because essentially all the known techniques uh, that we have wouldn't, uh, wouldn't allow you to prove security uh, of, of those schemes. And that also in particular shows that those published security proofs actually contain very subtle flaws. And uh, uh, yeah, so there's, there's slight flaws in, in those proofs. So that was a lot of um, negative results. Luckily, we also have some positive results. So uh, this buggers on the et al scheme we can repair with a slight modification. And so that means that we still have a two-round multi-signature scheme secure under a discrete log assumption. This, this scheme is slightly more expensive than the plain Schnorr or Cozy schemes, but we, we implement it in the framework that Cozy was implemented in. And what we, sh what we notice is that 16,000 signers can together sign a common message in less than two seconds. And uh, we saw a slight increase in bandwidth compared to, to, compared to COSI and 75% increase in computation. But still, this is very efficient and scalable. And uh, so we, we can use this even for large amounts of signers. There are also other options. So since, um, since we published the scheme, other, other, uh, or since we published these attacks, other schemes came out that went back to focusing on three rounds. So we know that with a bit more uh, interaction, we can also obtain secure schemes uh, from the discrete log assumption. Or alternatively, we can build on BLS signatures, and uh, uh, they have the advantage that they, that they need even less interaction, but the, the, the security assumption is maybe slightly stronger than just uh, discrete log. Okay, so that was a lot about multi-signatures. Is there, is there a, a bigger lesson we can learn from this? And I think it, it, one thing it shows is that, that security proofs are extremely important and that we shouldn't place too much trust in cryptographic schemes that haven't been proven secure. And in particular, also, we shouldn't drop steps from a scheme that seem to be there just to make the proof work because this is exactly what can get you in trouble. But that's not the full story because on the other hand, um, some of these schemes had security proofs that looked extremely convincing, uh, but they did have subtle flaws. And these, these proofs can really be very difficult to verify. So I think in the future, um, we really need tool support for checking such proofs. And in summary, I think that this shows that provable security is, is really not perfect, but still it's the best tool that we have to uh, design provably secure cryptographic schemes. Thank you for your attention.
Questions? So under two to the 45 uh, work, you can basically steal money from Bitcoin by breaking Bitcoin signatures? So they, they haven't started using this yet. So they're, they're thinking <laughs> of, uh, or unfortunately, <laughs> uh, no, so they, they, they're thinking of, of, of switching to Schnorr signatures and then using these multi-signatures, um, but they haven't done that yet. And they've since revised their paper to, to do three rounds of communication, so uh, that, that's fine. So you didn't talk about the, f oh, go ahead. Hey, Ling Ren from VMware Research. Uh, this is just a clarifying question, but is your attack exploiting the bugs in the security proofs, or is it the yes. more orthogonal? Yeah, Thanks. exactly. So there's exactly steps in the security proof where there's a statement saying, uh, what I extract is uh, independent from this, and that's exactly not true. So uh, there is a clear step where we, where we uh, abuse those flaws. All right, let's thank the speaker again.